Hello everybody, welcome to a new Blender Geometry Notes tutorial. There seems to be a new theme here on the channel where I recreate older tutorials with the new Fields Geometry Notes. So in this video we're going to take a look at this one, which back then I called Art Directed Ambient Occlusion. It's really simple to do, so let's jump right in and do that. I am here in Blender, this is 3.1, I think this is even 3.1.1 one release candidate and I've already prepared this very simple scene here as you can see I have a little bit of a like an uh, a seamless backdrop and I have a cube and a cylinder and the goal is to create ambient occlusion effect but like art directed like very specific I want this cube to cause ambient occlusion on this um, backdrop but not the cylinder for example okay so let's do this um, just like in the last tutorial of course we need geometry because it's not a shader now we're doing it in geometry nodes we need geometry so this backdrop here um, doesn't have enough geometry on it we need to uh, add let me activate the screencast keys they are active you can see down here so I press ctrl R um, hover on this edge here and then I use the mouse button to scroll up and I'm gonna create a whole bunch of geometry going this way and we need more down here of course as well so we can do the same thing Control R and then why not let's add some in the back there okay so we're always aiming for as close to squares as possible so now our backdrop has enough geometry and on that backdrop we can create a new geometry notes node tree I'm in the geometry notes workspace here and um, now we don't have this attribute workflow anymore we have fields now and fields work a little bit differently but we still have the proximity node and we're gonna use that to figure out how close an object is to our object in this case the backdrop plane so shift a search for proximity geometry proximity so if we were to go to geometry it will be in here right geometry proximity okay but just hitting shift a search and looking for it is also a very quick and easy way to do that okay so this is our input geometry this is the backdrop and this is our proximity node which we have to plug in a target now let's go for the cube okay so with this, we can simply drag the cube in here and then we get an object inf info node and we want to get the proximity of our geometry, this thing, to the cube. And the distance based on the faces, that's fine. The distance would be our attribute, the proximity attribute uh, that we can simply plug into the output node. So we can use it on the output attributes here on the geometry nodes modifier. And let's just call it AO because it would be sort of like an ambient occlusion. And then we simply go over to shading. Let me switch this to shaded view. I mean Eevee here. And on our backdrop here, let's switch this off too. We can now go shift A input attribute plug in our name we called it AO and if you plug that into the base color you can already see something is happening okay first of all I have to go back here and switch this to relative because this cube has a location change on it okay now let's go back to shading and we can see something down here is happening it is getting darker there I do have some shadows in this scene from my single work couple light sources that I have in here um, but there's something down here let's make it more obvious by using the factor here and piping that into a color ramp Put that in here use the factor instead doesn't really matter if you use color or factor but the proximity attribute is actually a factor uh, um, um, a floating point number so let's plug that in here and where this factor is zero let's see what happens let's put let's turn zero into like green and this into something like a bright yellow 
And you can see we get some green down here. If I set that to ease, what happens if I drag this out? You can see, we can now see our ambient occlusion um, attribute. And the, uh, the reason why we can see it is because our object back here has a lot of geometry. So for each face on this geometry here, like for each face here, our geometry nodes node tree now calculates the proximity to the cube, stores that into the attribute, and we use that attribute in the shader to color that piece of geometry, that little square, okay? And that's why we get this. And you can see that we can now do sort of art directed ambient occlusion. Now the red cube is causing ambient occlusion onto our backdrop, but the cylinder doesn't. Cool. How about we want some sort of uh, shadow ambient occlusion effect on the cylinder, uh, on the cube based on the proximity of the cylinder. So on this cylinder selected, we create a new node tree, shift a proximity. Uh, what do we want? We want the cylinder, proximity to the cylinder. We know we have to set it to relative. We pipe the distance out here and on this node tree of the cylinder. We now have this attribute. Let's also call it AO. Okay, let's select the cube, which is red. Shift A input attribute. Like on this cube, we have this attribute called AO. P plug that in here. Shift A converter color ramp. Use that AO for this color ramp. Now we should see an effect. Let's turn this into red and this guy into something like more purplish or something. So if I pick the cylinder in GX over here, we should get this to be looking more red, which I think we do, but our cube, let me just go back in here real quick. If I go into edit mode, our cube doesn't have much geometry. I do have that bevel modifier on here, which I can remove. And then I can go right click, subdivide, subdivide this guy. Oh, I have to select all first. Right click, subdivide a bunch of times, maybe 20, so we get a, a really high poly mesh on the cube, which is cool. And then, oh, by the way, the whole bevel thing, you can still you can still use the bevel, right? Even though it now has a lot of geometry. That's fine. Now, what if we go back to shading so we can see this a little bit better. Now we have more resolution. You can see we get this red, not very clear to see. Let's turn it bluish, like the blue cylinder is turning this guy blue when it's closer. So if I take the cylinder, we get purple cube and the cylinder is coming closer. We're making, turning um, the cylinder blue. What if we go, what if we go into it? Yep. As you can see we're turning the cylinder blue. So how can we increase this effect a little? We could always come in here and do that. Or we can uh, add or multiply something to this factor. So shift a converter math. There should be an multiply add. And now we can play with this add. Okay, so we have to go to negative to move this whole thing over to the left. So we're basically increasing this proximity range. So now if I move this guy out here, it has now, it has a, a larger range of effect. And with the multiplier we can play, if we take that down, we get more of a, a feathering on the outside or sharper edges, basically, okay? Okay, so now the cube is affecting the plane and turning it green. Okay, but only the cube is affecting the plane and now only the uh, cylinder is affecting the cube. And that's really all there is to it. Let's go back to this guy. This is all you need to do.
that's it. You can see it's very easy to do with the fields system of geometry nodes. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the notifications, check out my Patreon page where you can get all the finished blend files of my tutorials at patreon.com slash chrispy. Thanks for watching, Chris P. out.